So, um, Igor, I'm going to presume, during the surgery, the scalene is divided. What does that mean exactly, and what happens to the scalene that remains in your body? Well, the body generates scar tissue around it. Dean, do you want to handle this one? So there's a di difference, I would guess, between dividing the scalene, which I would say um, people would probably just, using electrocautery, just cut it off of where it attaches to the first rib, and then that will retract, and, and any muscle that is no longer being functional, and since the scalene has nothing to pull on, it, it, it can't be functional anymore, it's going to atrophy. But I, I, I think scar tissue forms no matter what we do in surgery. I mean, scars, gun, it's inevitable. And so what I've seen in patients that have just, that I've done redos on that have just had the scalene divided off of the first rib, is it seems to be stuck to the brachial plexus. Maybe that's totally inconsequential. But one of the things I do during a redo is just take out whatever scalene I feel is in the vicinity of the brachial plexus. And so if I'm doing that during redos, which is much harder, I want to do it during a first time operation. So there's a difference between dividing a scalene and removing part of it. You can't remove all of the scalenes. I mean, it goes up to the C3 vertebrae and you, you, you need art with his fancy neurosurgery tools and techniques to get all the way up there. And it's not necessary, I think, as long as it's away from the brachial plexus and it's no longer doing its job, it's just going to atrophy because it can't function anymore. So I, I, I think that degree of residual scalene is probably not uh, important in terms of long-term outcome or creating a problem.